We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful, you are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful, you are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful, you are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, Ramaki Anema. Here in my mama, saints of the Most High, please join me in praising this God. And let us observe the protocol that is so important for us to gain access into the throne room of God. Hallelujah, into His presence today. The Bible says, according to the psalmist, Psalm 100, that we should enter his gate with thanksgiving in our heart and into his courts with praise. Sense of God, this God is so awesome. We, we cannot even fathom his goodness, his faithfulness. Hallelujah. It's by his grace that we have breath in our nostrils even today. Let's begin to uh, appreciate this God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's begin to praise His holy name. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Father, we glorify your most holy name. Eternal rock of ages, we give you praise. Elayon, we worship your most holy name. Abba Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory and praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory and praise. Thank you, Lord. 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 We worship you, Abba Father. We appreciate you, our Lord. Oh, we praise you, Abba Father. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank Hallelujah. Sense of God, Jesus says in Mark chapter 16, uh, chapter 14 rather, and uh, verse 28, he says, After that I have risen, I will go before you into Galilee. 
saints of the Most High, my prayer for you tonight that you will have an encounter with your maker tonight. Hallelujah. This is your Galilee. At this juncture, this is your Galilee. Hallelujah. This is your Galilee. The essence of going to Galilee is to meet with him. And that is, you will have an encounter with him tonight. That is my prayer for you today. I want you to be thanking God for this encounter that you're going to have with your maker. Even today, in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, distance is not a barrier. As long as you are under the sound of my voice, you are going to meet with your maker today. I want you to thank him for this great privilege today that he's going to give you. I said you will meet with your maker today. You will hear his voice for your life. You will receive instructions from on high. You will receive direction today for your life. You will hear, hallelujah, the word that is infallible. The word that you need for victory over the situation that you are dealing with right now. In the name of Jesus, saints of the Most High God, let us pray. Let us pray wherever you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, we put in Father, thank you for such a privilege that we have to be called your children. Hallelujah. We thank you because your faithfulness endures forever. And even right now, your plans for us, they are so humongous. They are so great. And because you are faithful, you will not fail any one of us today. You will not fail us from having an encounter with you today. You will not fail us from receiving from on high today your engrafted word, your blessings, your promises for us, your instructions for us. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, your direction in righteousness, in Jesus' mighty name. Abba Father, thank you for destroying yokes. Thank you for lifting burdens that may be on the shoulder of your people today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Because in your presence there is fullness of joy. Thank you. Thank you for making our joy full even today in your holy presence. Father, I give you praise on the behalf of your people. Because your word declares that when two of us on earth agree concerning a thing, in agreement, we want to have an encounter with you. We want to hear your voice for our lives today. Father, in agreement, we want the totality of what you have in store for us in Christ Jesus to be experienced in our lives. Indeed, in Jesus' mighty name, we want us to be placed, seated where you have placed us. That is far above principles and powers, might and dominion not to be under any circumstance or situation, that your joy will be reigning and ruling in life. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Abba Father, for the miraculous even tonight. Thank you for the tangible and the intangible. Thank you for the credible tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the life of everyone under the sound of my voice today. Father, this is the confidence that I have in you that any time, and every time I call upon you, in line with your will and purpose, you always answer and you always hearken. So shall it be tonight, in the name of Jesus, and upon the life of everyone under the sound of my voice right now. In Jesus' mighty name and all the saints shout, Amen. Saints of the Most High God, I greet you with joy tonight. Those on the radio, I greet you all the same. With the joy of the Most High God in my heart and because of what he has ordained to do in your life today, I specifically congratulate you even in advance and everyone under the sound of my voice, on the phone, wherever, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that you're hearing the sound of my voice today. I want you to know, as you're hearing his voice today, do not harden your heart. Praise God. God, through his word, through his voice that he's uttering to you right now, yokes will be destroyed. Burdens will be removed. 
His creative, eloistic anointing is being released right now. It's in the air. Yes, wherever you are right now, in that living room, in that bedroom, in that vehicle, right now, wherever you are listening, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in that boss, in that boss, in that. Yes, on the radio, online, right now, the Shakana glory of God has enveloped you right now. Hallelujah. 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 Saints of God, I congratulate you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God forevermore. Tonight, I'd like for you please to turn with me in your Bibles to first epistle general to the Corinthian Christians and also to us today. Amen. Chapter number 14. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter number 14. I began sharing with us the tools of our trade, our trade as in the believer's trade. I made us understand that you and I in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, and you and I as a creation of God, we have a trade, we have a purpose, we have an assignment, we have a reason for God sending us forth onto this planet earth. And I made us understand you know, because nobody asks you whether you like to come on the face of the planet, whether you like the date of your birth or not. Nobody asks you. So you know that it is not you that sent your, 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 yourself here on the planet, but God, your maker. It's not even your mama or your papa that did that, but was God. Hallelujah. You and I cannot send anybody forth. But God, only God can do that. And so he has given us a, an assignment. He has given us a, what I call a trade. A trade, not necessarily because uh, we are buying and selling and all the rest of it. No, not necessarily that. But also it includes that too. Because buying and selling could be a purpose that God has for you. Hallelujah. But what I'm saying is, you have an assignment, you have a purpose, you have a destiny to fulfill on the face of the planet. And so, you can only be successful in this assignment by using the tools, the equipment that he has made available for you to be successful in this assignment. For he will not ask you. To do something or give you an assignment that you are not equipped to do. And I began revealing and sharing these tools of our trade. And let us understand there are nine of these tools of our trade found in First Corinthians chapter number 12. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are nine of them. They are also called the manifestation gift of the Holy Spirit. In other words, this gift, these tools of our trade are given and administered by the Holy Spirit that lives inside of every believer, which means every believer has been equipped to succeed in life. If you fail, it will only be because of your ignorance of knowing and therefore not utilizing the tools that God has given unto you by his Holy Spirit to succeed at. Praise God. And that is why this, this exposition, this impartation, this teaching is extremely important. It's a prophetic teaching. Hallelujah. This is not my idea. This is not a good, this is not a sermon. He's not, no, 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 no. It's a, it's a word from, from the Lord unto his people. So when you hear his voice, harden not your heart, please. And I pray that the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word will be, will be, will be given unto you. Hallelujah. That you will prosper through the understanding of his word. My God. And the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 130, it says the entrance of his word gives light. Light is an empowerment. And I pray that the understanding of his word will give you uh, uh, the grace, the empowerment 
Hallelujah. To be successful in life and in particular your God ordained assignment, that is the essence of what you're hearing, saints of God. This is very, very important. You cannot switch off because you need it. I said to you, if you are going to be successful on this face of the planet, it has to do by the enabling grace of God, except the Lord build the house. They that labor, or they that build the house, only labor but in vain, except the Lord watch over the city. It's only God that can protect you. It's only God that can cause you to be successful. Your MP cannot cause you to be successful. I'm telling you right now, none of your president or prime ministers or, or the politicians can cause you to be successful. No, no, no. Because <laughs> it's only the blessing of the Lord will make rich and add no sorrow to it. If any other person but God happened to make something happen in life, you know, what I'm talking about here is beyond just having money. You will be loaded also financially. But what I'm saying is this. Success is defined from God's perspective as, your, as the fulfillment of your divine essence in life or purpose in life. You can have money and still a failure in life. Money, having money is not the measure of success in life. I love the way the apostle puts it. In 3 John verse 2, he says, Beloved, I wish above all that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospered. Notice he did not say, even as you become a multi-millionaire or a billionaire or a trillionaire or as you start making money. He didn't, he didn't say that. So you better understand what you're hearing. I said this is not a sermon. It's a prophetic message. It's a prophetic word unto you. So I need you to understand what you're hearing, please. Hallelujah. So I began sharing with us these nine tools of our trade. I started with the first category that, it, that I that have titled the revelation gift. These gifts are tools that are available for every believing child of God to profit with. That is why God ordained for us and you uh, 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 for, for, and me that whatever we lay our hands on, we will prosper. Prosperity has been ordained for every believing child of God because of these tools that he has made available unto us. If we fail to use the tools, we will only be the loser. This is very important for you to understand. You can't pray this away and say, Lord, prosper me. I will just be praying. Prosper me. I'm not going to use these tools. It's like in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus spoke expressly, talking to believers. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon scorpions and upon serpents and over all the abilities of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies Hot you, Luke chapter 10 and the 19th verse. Listen to me, child of God, I'm going somewhere. Praise God. Now, he says he has given you power. If you don't receive the power he has given you, do you think you can successfully trample upon scorpions and serpents and over all the abilities of the enemy and nothing will not hurt you? That is delusional. If anyone thinks like that, that is liking unto what I'm saying to us today. Hallelujah. And I've been sharing to us and been communicating to us. Hallelujah. The importance of knowing these tools of our trade. If the power is given you or the tools is made available unto you, <laughs> you fail to use them, then you, can, you don't expect to be successful or to prosper in life. It's just not going to happen. 
That is why I began sharing with us the revelation gift. We also understand there are three gifts in this category, praise God. Namely, the gift of the word of knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is everything. Everything hinges on what you know. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So you don't want to remain ignorant. You want to be knowledgeable in every arena of life. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Including you want to be knowledgeable of every tool, every equipment, every blessing, every benefit that God has already provided for you. You've got to know them. You've got to know them. You've got to know them. You can't say, oh, I'm waiting on God to help me. No, God has help, already helped you by providing what you need, the grace you need, the equipment you need to, to, to prosper in life. Amen. And to enjoy God, experience all of his promises. Amen. Enjoy the glory of God in all arenas of life. That no weapon formed or fashion against you will prosper. Everything you need for you to live a triumphant, victorious life. He has made it available unto you. Oh, Second Peter 1 and 3. I love the way he says it. Hallelujah. He says, God, according as his divine power, has given unto us all things, all things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And it says, through the knowledge of him, through the knowledge, not ignorant. You can't remain ignorant and expect things to happen. It ain't going to happen like that. Never. And you can't, you can't use prayer to replace knowledge. No, you don't know. In fact, that prayer will not work. If you are ignorant when you're praying, you will pray in a miss. You can't look for some some anointed man of God, man of God, pray for me. Yeah, let just, I want to prosper. Your prayer will make me prosper. Listen to me, child of God. The word of God cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. The power of the word of God will not be made void. No prayer can circumvent the process of God for your life. If you don't utilize what he has made available for you to utilize, it means you are not following the divine precept, divine order. Listen to me good. You will only prosper in line with your work of obedience to the precepts that God has given unto you or the instruction that he has given unto you. Amen. So the first gift we discover is knowledge. Getting knowledge. Study. Study to get knowledge. Seek God. Seek God from everywhere. Seek God. That is why one of the things you do, you know, on this service, I mean, uh, uh, connecting onto this service every week is that you are seeking God. You are seeking knowledge. You are seeking divine, divine, divine encounter and so on and so forth. This is good. That is the perfect will of God for you. Seek God. Hallelujah. Now, from there, we went on to discuss that knowledge, when you have the knowledge, also, there is a need for you to know how to use the knowledge. The knowledge that you have gained, how to apply into your life, how the knowledge, the information, the revelation you have, you have encountered is relevant in your life or is useful to you. And so the gift of the word of wisdom comes into play. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the application of knowledge as I defined it. Praise God. The word of God is wisdom. I want you to know the word of God is revelation. It's not, it's not logos. It's rema. It's revelation. It's a now word. Hallelujah. It releases life. It makes active. It quickens your faith. Your faith becomes alive, active, my God. And you have tremendous supernatural power that is dynamic in its working release through the surge or the quickening of your faith and confidence in God. And this comes only by revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The entrance of his word gives light, power, direction, illumination, victory, and so on and so forth. My God. And then from that light, wisdom 
is released also. Because when you see clearly, huh, you know what's going on. Praise God. Then you will receive wisdom. Praise God. You will know how, or how to use the knowledge that you have. You will know what's going on. You will know how to rightly apply it. Hallelujah. You know the timing as well, and so on and so forth. In Jesus' mighty name, and victory is guaranteed when you walk in wisdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, from there, we touch on the, the third gift or tool in this category of revelation gift, as in the gift of the discerning or discernment of spirits. Praise God. Of spirits, poorer spirits. Hallelujah. All of these are very, very relevant. Amen. They are not only relevant in church, but even on your vocational uh, duties or, or, or jobs. You know, they are, they are important. They are useful even on your business. They are useful at your ministry, of course. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need these tools. It's for you to use. Mm. Now, and now we're not from there because illumination is everything. You can't operate in darkness. You can't do anything if you're in darkness. So this revelatory gift is very, very important. You have to know it. You have to use it. Praise God. And, and you have it. It's not something you pray for. You, got, you already got it. Just have to acknowledge it and believe. And the Holy Spirit that, that administers it will supply it unto you every time and whenever you need these or any of these tools and you can need all of the tools all the uh, you know together to do to 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 be successful sometimes you might need the use of all of this gift to be successful you know at a particular project or, or on a particular project you may need three of them at a goal you may need six you may need seven and so on and so forth praise god but you need to understand that once you have this uh, knowledge under your belt, praise God, then we went to the next category of, of, uh, of uh, tools of our trade, which, which are called the vocal gifts, hallelujah, of the Holy Spirit. And he began sharing the first one in this category is called the gift of tongues. I call I call it supernatural language, the language you have not learned. You have to, in order for you to get supernatural results, praise God, you have to live supernatural lifestyle. You have to apply and adopt supernatural tools that, that has been given you, you know, to profit with. You cannot use natural tool to do supernatural assignment. You, are, you won't get the supernatural kind of result or success that you need. This is wisdom from God, folks. Hallelujah. Sense of God. You have to apply it. So tongues, I began sharing with us. There are three types of tongues. I'm not going to go over all what I said. But please, I encourage you to listen to the archives. I'm just going over so that to refresh your mind. Or also in case you are hearing, you didn't, you miss. The last week's pro, uh, service or message. Praise God. So you, 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 you can still catch what I'm going to share with us today. I said there are three types of tongues. Namely, you have the type of, a type of tongue that is a sign or sign to the unbeliever and sign to the fact that you are a believer in Christ Jesus. Because only believers in Christ Jesus can speak in these tongues. Only believers in Christ Jesus has been given this tool of tongues. Only believers. I also briefly mentioned that could be fake tongues. You know, the devil counterfeit anything that is original. But I didn't say much on that. But I just mentioned that so you know. But I'm saying to you, if you are a believer today... You know, it's not fake tongue that you have. You have the genuine, genuine tongue. Because the Holy Spirit is the one responsible for the tongue in you. As a child of God, the Holy Spirit is not sharing the abode of your spirit with any demon. 
The demon can only go as far as your mind. If you are a believer, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The word sealed means you are secured. So no demon can enter as soon as the Holy Spirit enters your life or the womb of your spirit. Please understand this. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 13. After you have confessed Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. In other words, after you have believed God or Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And have confessed the same according to Romans 10 and verse 10. Praise God. Believe in your heart, you confess the same with your mouth. Hallelujah. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Praise God. Now the Holy Spirit now comes to seal that part of you. And that part of you become just like God is. As He is, so are we. All believers, as He is, so are we. Right now, God will not cohabit with demons. Mm, blessed be his holy name I pray you catch that revelation right there I say God will not cohabit with demon spirit mm. Anyway Child of God Listen to this Share with us three types of tongue One as a sign to the believer Two Prophesying tongue The one that must be interpreted And three the one as a prayer language. Hallelujah. We talk extensively on the one about prayer language. I explain all the other ones too, how they work. Praise God. And then we move on from there to the, uh, to the next gift in that category, which is called the interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. Just like the prophesying tongue, there is a need. The prophesying tongue becomes prophecy when we interpret it. That is when he will benefit somebody. Even he won't benefit you if you are just speaking to yourself in that sense, but indirectly will benefit you because when you are prophesying, you are speaking God's word into your situation, into your life, and into your future. You will reap the benefit indirectly, but you will not be aware that this is what you are speaking. That is what I mean by that. But as a, as a prophecy for the benefit of another person, that tongue must be interpreted in the language that the person that the prophecy is for understands. Now, please look with me where I told us to turn to, please, which is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. And let's look at the 13th verse. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and the 13th verse. We are looking today in the tools of our trade. And we are, uh, I'm sharing on the interpretation of tongue, which is the second vocal gift that I will be sharing with us. Amen. In the tools of our trade uh, series. Look at verse number 13, please. He says, Wherefore, let him that speaks or speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. This unknown tongue here, hallelujah, hallelujah, is the prophesying tongue, you know, which is, 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 uh, is pointing us to the need of or the existence of this gift called the interpretation of tongues. It's a gift given by the same Holy Spirit that makes all the other eight gifts available unto us. They are very, very profitable indeed. I cannot overemphasize the importance of this gift. You need this gift every day, everywhere, every place. Hallelujah. For your prophet. I want you to understand that when this gift of interpretation of tongue is working in your life, what you cannot probably achieve, the result you cannot get in like 50 years or so, you will get it just in few seconds, a few minutes, you know, uh, uh, by, by, by interpreting 
you know, the word of God, the mystery of God's holy word through the, in, the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Hear me, child of God. In the book of Acts, chapter 2. Let's look there, please, together. The book of Acts, chapter number 2. Let's go there. And I'll read from verse number 8. And see a powerful demonstration of these so-called interpretation. Hallelujah. Of this of tongue, the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. Let's check something out here. Hallelujah. Blessed his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Chapter number two. Let's start from verse number eight. Praise God. I read from the King James transition of the Bible. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? These guys, these 120 people in the upper room, they spoke in tongues. But God gave the interpretation, the understanding of what each of these guys were saying in the language that everyone that, that was hearing what was happening on this, you know, in this uh, upper room, gave them the understanding, the interpretation of it. I explained to us how the prophesying tongue works because I explained a little bit about this interpretation, how it works. I said, is either God will give the same vessel that he's prophesying in tongues the interpretation of what he is prophesying in tongue. Okay. It's not a transcript, but the interpretation, the meaning, what God is saying, the message. Praise God. So it is not, it's not translation. Interpretation is different from translation. Praise God. You know, he's communicating the message in the language that is understood. Now, God will either give you the believer... If he wants to, you don't decide what happened. But you have the ability in God, if you need to, interpret the prophecy you have just given in tongues. God will give you that ability to do it there and then. On the spur of the moment. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to be saying, oh, God, okay, okay. So, so now what am I saying? What am I saying, God? Tell me what I'm saying so that I can tell them in English. No, 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 no. That's not how it works spontaneously as you are landing as you are landing the tongues the, the interpretation follows immediately however there are times when the holy spirit will give somebody else that have heard you but the interpretation or the or the but the prophecy perhaps is not for that person and is for somebody else in that group hearing that prophecy in tongues will give another person the interpretation of it but they will be a believer too you see they will be a believer too okay in this i'm talking about the gift of the interpretation of tongues praise god sometimes god supernaturally when you speak in tongues will give a totally unbeliever the understanding of it. That is because God is using that also as a sign. The tongues you are speaking is using it as a sign to the unbeliever. Please, I don't want you to be confused. Two different things. The interpretation of tongues works all the time by you interpreting the 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 prophecy you have given in tongues either personally by yourself that has spoken the tongues or somebody present that will be a believer also that have heard the tongue and God will give the person the interpretation not the translation the interpretation the message that you have just communicated in an unknown tongue that's the difference another believer now, that believer will now interpret the prophecy in tongues that you have given 
And the person that needs to hear and understand it and be blessed by that prophecy will be able to hear it now and then they'll be blessed by it. Hallelujah. The other one that is a sign is different. A sign God will give an unbeliever the ability to understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's like God will like translate what is being spoken in tongues in the language that that person that is listening, usually an unbeliever, because he's trying to do a supernatural work right there. Give the person a sign that God is real, that these people have something called the supernatural that you listening don't have, but you need to have it. Amen. So, and that is why that one is called, you know, a sign to the unbeliever and a sign that you are a believer. And the, what makes you a believer is that God is inside, uh, lives inside of you. You are, uh, you have, you have, uh, you have met Jesus Christ, uh, made him the, the Lord of your life and so on and so forth in Jesus mighty, mighty name. Amen. Now, let me, uh, verse number, verse, let me jump, let me jump, let me jump, let me jump, let me jump. Now, verse number nine was just mentioning the names of the people from all over the world that were there present when this phenomenon was happening in the upper room, praise God. They were happening in the upper room and so on and so forth. And uh, look at verse 12. Because of time, you know, you can study the rest on your own, just describing the kind of people present from all over the world. The Bible says right here, from all over the world. They all heard them in their own languages. What an awesome God. It's only God that can do that. Amen. Now, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth these? What does this mean? They noticed this is a supernatural phenomenon. This is not natural. <laughs> you know, this is not a coincidence either. either. This is supernatural. This is something out of the ordinary. This is an extraordinary phenomenon. Hallelujah. So, I want you to understand this gift is very, 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 very powerful. 3,000 souls gave their life to Christ because of these supernatural tongue and interpretation, sign, you know, and so on and so forth that took place right here. You know, I want you to understand something. 3,000 souls the first day. The next day, 5,000 souls. That's 8,000. You've got a mega church right there. Saints of God, listen to this. This is very, very effective. Your promotion can come in just one day. Maybe from a cleaner to the CEO in just one day. Hallelujah. God, when this gift is necessary where you are god can use you and cause favor to flow in your life by the manifestation of this gift that you're hearing any one of them can 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 open tremendous supernatural door of favor in your life saints of god let me now tie this the interpretation of tongues equals prophecy also but the gift of prophecy is also available unto every believer. Now, this gift of prophecy does not make you a prophet. The mere fact that you are able to prophesy does not mean next week you print a card and say, prophet, 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 so, 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 and so. Prophet, so, 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 and so. A lot of people do that because of ignorance. Hallelujah. The gift of prophecy is different from the office of a prophet. We are not going there right now, but I just need to mention that. Put that in one hand. That's for another time. Hallelujah. But we are talking about the gift, which is a tool. It's a tool that you have. There is a need for you to use this tool of prophecy. Number one, God only confirms his word in any given situation. By the release of this gift of prophecy, which simply means you are communicating the mind of God, the will of God, the words of God, the voice of God is projected forth. 
by speaking it out to somebody or even to yourself. Praise God. And then God confirms his word. Hebrews chapter number 1 verse 3. He says, God upholds all things that he has created by the spoken power of his word. His word, prophecy, releases a logistic power of God, supernatural power of God, the creative power of God is released when you prophesy. That is why prophecy is so powerful and dynamic. Your life depends on it. Your life depends on prophecy. I mean the word of God. In other words. I'm not saying. You know. That is why. God doesn't want you to be going all over the place. Looking for prophecy. No. That is why he gave you the ability also. You can prophesy to yourself. You can prophesy when you need to. If you want to get a result. Always prophesy. I say, if you want to get result on the mission field, on your assignment, in your business, on your job, prophesy. Prophesy. Prophesy the word of God. Prophesy the word of God concerning your promotion, your success, you know, your health. Divine favor, every aspect of your life, divine wisdom, understanding, prophesy into your life. If you want result, if you want result, that is. <laughs> you know, God confirms only his word. That is why when you are speaking in tongues, it is the word of God that you are releasing, that you are speaking. You may not understand it, but that word will not return void unto God. That is what Isaiah 55, hallelujah, from verse number 8 all the way down to verse number 12, particularly verses 10 and 11. He says, my word will not return for unto me, that it will deliver what, I, what it has been ordained to do. He won't return void. Your word will return void, but not the word of God. The word of some, some well-meaning relative or friend of yours might sound nice, but it will, it will return void. Mm. But if it's the word of God, word from God, which is called prophecy, hallelujah. So the Lord God's giving you that gift. It will not return void. You have to use it for that same reason. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Please go there with me. Let's see a few verses here. Hallelujah. Prophecy. Prophecy. Articulating, verbalizing the mind of God. Praise God. The will of God concerning a situation. Amen. If you want a change in a situation, you have to learn to use that gift. Let that gift flow. So if someone asks you to prophesy, don't think they are saying you are a prophet. Not necessarily, or prophetess, not necessarily. They are only telling you, use the gift that God has given you. Because it is needful for you to get result. Mm. But if God has called you to be a prophet, or prophetess, that's okay. I'm not talking about that, whether he's called you to be that or not. I'm just making a clarification right here. So you don't say, well, then everybody's a prophet. No, not everybody's a prophet. Mm -mm. Not everybody is a prophet, but every believer can prophesy. Right, look at verse 1, please. And the B part in particular, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. And the B part of it. It says, I'll read the whole thing, but uh, uh, the, the B part is really what I want to uh, lay emphasis on. It says, Follow after charity. And desire spiritual gifts. You know, all of the gifts that God has made available unto us, desire all of them. He's not, he's not demeaning any other gift. But he's laying emphasis. He says, but rather that ye may prophesy. See that this gift of prophecy 
He's not put under the pillow. You need it to succeed also. Praise God. Don't, don't, don't say, well, I'm not a prophet. Uh-uh. He's giving you the gift to prophesy. The ability to prophesy. God wants to speak his mind, his will. Hallelujah. I want to work miracle signs and wonders through you. You know, it comes through, <laughs> through the release of the word of God. I love the way Hebrews, Hebrews 11 and 3 puts it. It says every, everything that God created were created by the spoken power of his word. His word is power. The word of God is power until he's spoken. Remember, spoken, that is prophecy. That is prophesying, spoken. The mind of God, the word of God, the will of God that you articulated. Or that you articulate. Hallelujah. His prophecy. By the spoken power of his word. God operates by prophesying too. Let there be light. He, that's prophecy. He prophesied. He spoke his word. My God. Until he spoke it. Nothing manifested. I said until he spoke it. Until he prophesied. Nothing manifested. And until you prophesy to yourself, that is why you are to pray without ceasing. Do you know prayer is prophesying? Oh God, let me stand up right here. Do you know prayer is prophesying? God said, Jesus said, men always to prophesy and not to shut up. God does not shut up. When he says, let there be, he says, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light. Continuously, he's still saying it right now. Let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light. Oh God, oh God, oh God. That is what prayer, in essence, that is what it is, in essence. That is a supernatural way of praying. It produces tremendous result. Oh, that takes me to Psalm 91 verse 15. He says, he shall call upon me. He shall prophesy. He shall speak my word. And I will answer. Hey God, hallelujah. He shall speak my word. He shall prophesy my word. And I will answer. Says God. That word that you, that you speak or that you have spoken will not, oh God, return word, will surely manifest as God's prophesied and there was light hallelujah he spoke every other thing into existence and they, they manifest just the way he spoke them amen saints of god this is what god is saying to you amen you have to do that in your god or in life in jesus mighty name you know prophecy is not just for a few privileged individuals no you have it in you god is not a man that will lie look at what verse 2 says Talking about prophecy, prophecy, prophesying, praise God. Speaking God's mind, praise God. Don't be afraid to speak God's mind, God's will to yourself, to your family, to your children, to your business, on your job. My God, you can prophesy yourself to be CEO. After all, he has ordained that you are the head and not the tail. Yes, he has ordained. He has ordained that you are the head. He has ordained that no weapon formed or fashion against you will prosper. You have to learn to prophesy that to your life. Verse 2 says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. In other words, you are not speaking the words of men, but you are speaking the words of God. You are prophesying. When you speak in tongues, oh, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about speaking in tongues and praying in tongues and all to do, you know, with this gift, this vocal gift, is this. You are speaking God's word. You need to, at any given opportune time, put the words of God in your mouth. You know, in your own flesh, you know, there is a great pool for you to be speaking from your flesh, from your feeling. You want to be speaking your problem. You want to tell everybody what, 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 what the problem you are going through. Or under the disguise, probably, I'm asking for help. Listen to me, child of God. You speak the word of God. Call those things that be not. Not calling those things that be. In telling somebody your problems, the words of your life, what you are doing is you are calling those things that be. 
you are shooting yourself in the leg. Listen to me. <laughs> I didn't say <laughs> you don't, you can't ask somebody to agree with you in prayer. But when you are taking all this time telling people, looking for somebody to tell your stories to, why don't you obey God? Is there inside of you? Why don't you begin to open your mouth and begin to prophesy over yourself, over your situation? Speak to your mountains the word of the Lord. Ask, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. Pain in the leg, pain in the back, sickness, tumor in the body. Hear ye the word of the Lord. By his stripes I am made whole. He himself bear upon his own body all of these pain, infirmities, and so on and so forth. Oh yes, I am free from this pain. I, you build pain, you cannot stay in my body. Amen. That's what we're talking about. That's what God is saying. Sense of the Most High God. Let me put a comma right here. Sense of God. And I want you to reminisce upon what, what you've just heard. Are you prophesying? Are you speaking in tongues? Uh, are, you, are, you, are you even prophesying in tongues with the interpretation of it? Are you? If you want to get tremendous result, I'm telling you, you have to use these gifts. They are there. You don't pray for them. They are already there. Just know that they are there. And by faith, receive them, walk in them. The Holy Spirit without fail will always supply you if you acknowledge them. Because if you fail to acknowledge them, thinking, okay, I have to pray about this, uh, that God, I have to fast, that God will give me all this gift. No, 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 no. That is ignorance. That is praying in ignorance. They are already there because the Holy Spirit is already there. Do you have to pray for the Holy Spirit to be there? No. Once you confess Christ is there and he was not going anywhere, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He neither sleeps nor slumber. Mm -hmm. So you can always call on him anytime and every time you ought to call on him. Amen. Saints of God, ask yourself, have you prophesied over your life today? Have you prophesied over your tomorrow? Tonight before you sleep, prophesy over your tomorrow. Prophesy over the period that you'll be, you be unconscious, that is, that you'll be sleeping. Prophesy over it. Prophesy over it. That is, that is what prayer, prayer is all about. That is why you have to pray without ceasing. Somebody says, oh, that's too hard work. No, that's what you need. That's how you need to live. Prophesy over your tomorrow. Prophesy over the rest of today. Prophesy. Amen. Speak God's word concerning it. Don't be, don't be saying, I'm going to tell God. Listen, he doesn't need you to tell him. He's an all-knowing God. He knows before you became aware of what you are doing anyway. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm going to tell God, God, you know, tomorrow is the assessment day at the place of work. You know, you know, God, you know that. Uh -uh, he, uh, he knew before you became aware. Professor, why don't you speak that the heart of kings is in the hand of God and it turns the heart of this supervisor. The one is going to assess my, my file, you know, to, uh, to, to favor me. In fact, they will give me double promotion, double for my trouble. I've worked so hard in this company for the past 17 years. Double for my trouble in the name of Jesus. Double promotion, double promotion. I speak it tomorrow. Double promotion, double. Even right now, God is showing the man that I will make decisions that will assess my, 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 my file. You know, right now, he's giving them the vision concerning me. Double promotion. That is how you, you and I are supposed to live. The just shall live by faith. That is what it means, literally. You know, I'm telling God, you know, God, don't talk to show me, God. You know, you know that's, that's my kidney is not really functioning very well. We might have to start dialysis, you know, if a miracle doesn't happen. Listen, the way miracle will happen is for you. Prophesy to that situation. Don't be telling God what you what <laughs> what he knows. He says, Call those things that be not as though they were. That is prophecy, folks. You call the promise of God, the mind of God, the will of God to existence in your life. Sense of God, I want you tonight to begin to do that. More than ever before, 
Prophesy over your life. Prophesy over your marriage. Prophesy over your, your health. Prophesy, you know, over your endeavors in life, your business. Prophesy over it. Don't hear negative news on the, on the uh, negative news and then you begin to tell everybody, you phone your friend and say, do you, did you hear the news the, 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 today, the one o'clock news today, what they said concerning the economy? No, don't be talking like that. Don't be talking like that. It will not come now your dwelling. A thousand may fall on your side. Ten thousand on your right. He will not. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. He has ordained that you are the head. Amen. You have abundant life. Speak the word of God. Speak the mind of God. Speak the re uh, remor of God in, over your life. And it shall be well with you in Jesus mighty name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints of God. Listen to this. I received a testimony over the email from a precious man of God who is also listening on the line right now. He's on the line right now. Hear this. I want to read some of the things that was written here. And uh, some other things, I will call on him to 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 just uh, say it. But I'm going to say I'm going to say this. Here is the testimony. All right. It says I write to testify to the word of assurance I received while listening to Bishop Akintola on the divine encounters by radio. And I encourage everyone to do the same always. Now, this is a revelation here, as well as a testimony. You understand me? Because testimony does not only benefit the one who perhaps is hearing you, but also is benefiting you tremendously. Book of Revelation made us understand they overcame not only by the blood of the Lamb, but also by the words of their testimony. They overcame. You will live and experience triumphant, victorious lifestyle by your testimonies too. You will also be tremendously blessed. Do you know that your testimony are prophecies? Do you know that? Mm. The spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus Christ. Testimony is of Jesus. You are testifying to Jesus. Jesus is the word. You are testifying to the word you hear. Saints of God, endeavor. Like the Apostle Paul, encourage us to not to neglect all of the gifts. And also make sure that we are prophesying. The same thing I'm admonishing us tonight. Make sure you always testify. God has spoken to you expressly in many areas. Only one word, only, only one word is needful to make a difference in you. Only one word, only one word, only one word. Sense of God, what you're hearing today. You know, until you testify, it may not benefit you. You understand that? Until you testify as to what you've heard. You, when you hear God's word, you have to testify. Then it becomes permanent in your life. It benefits you. Transform your life. Hallelujah. You want to say, let me read another, another section of it. It says, as Bishop Akita Law is speaking on the tools of our trade, the Lord reaffirms in my spirit that success comes by being obedient to the word of God. Did you hear that? Being obedient to the word of God. And speaking. Or praying in tongues. In the word of God. I told us when you are speaking in tongues. It is the word of God you are speaking. You are, you are prophesying. You are not speaking your word. You are speaking God's word. God himself is speaking. And when God is speaking. That's God's word. Right? Praise God. When a man is speaking, that's a man's word. That's a man speaking, right? Hallelujah. A man can speak God's word through prophecy and speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Whoa, hallelujah. I know the man of God is on the line right now. Hallelujah. But I don't want to allow these so-called shyness to hinder, continue to hinder you. You've heard from God. 
This is a testimony that God fulfilled what he promised, the plan he has for us, for orchestrating these services every week and every service. He wants you to have an encounter. See, when you hear from God, that's an encounter. That is an encounter. It's not only when, you know, your leg miraculously grew out or two new eyeballs is formed within the socket of your, of your, <laughs> in your head. You know, no, no, not necessarily that. It's not limited only to that. Or you just be, you just had a new job without you applying for one. No, all those are good testimonies too. But it's not limited to those kind of things. Yes, when you hear from God, Amen. That's a great testimony. Praise God. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to always endeavor to testify. Always, 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 always. Don't keep it to yourself. You might be shortchanging yourself somehow. Praise God. I know I have the Archbishop on the line right now. Archbishop, and uh, I want you to press star six on your phone, sir. And uh, as you're led of the Spirit of God, maybe you want to share something more with the brethren tonight along these lines. Hallelujah. Hello there. Yes, we're listening. Yes, we're hearing you. We're hearing you loud and clear. Amen. Thank you. Thank, we thank God for your life. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Now, uh, so mention about a scripture that the Lord gave him as a result of his voice that he heard, uh, particularly last week. And that scripture is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses uh, 24 and 25. It simply says, The grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord, verse 25, endures forever. In other words, when you hear from God the word, hallelujah, it abides forever. You know, if you realize, appreciate what you've just heard or received, there's no way you would not share. No way. That is what he, 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 he just said right there. You know, and because of time, he, you know, he didn't, he didn't uh, elaborate on that. Hallelujah. And then, uh, you know, uh, God was now revealing to him, you know, uh, and to encourage us hearing right now uh, that, you know, that when you receive the word of God, as in the teachings and the tools of the trade in particular that we are receiving right now, hallelujah, you see, they are, these are the word of God. I didn't make it up. I mentioned in the beginning, this, are, this is prophetic. They are not my words. I didn't put them there. I didn't conjure them. I didn't put them together. No, the word of God. When you receive them, you can never fail. When you utilize them, when you act upon them, when you believe them and keep holding on to them, hallelujah, and act upon them, you shall surely, hallelujah, see the glory of the Lord in all areas of your life. The Lord also gave him other, other instruction to do certain researches and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. Maybe next time we will get into all that because of our time. Praise God forevermore. Saints of God, I want you to know God is not a man that will lie. He says his word will not return void unto him. Acts chapter 20, verse 38. The apostle says, I commit you unto God and to his word that is able to give you an inheritance among the saints. In other words, that is able to cause you to experience the promises of God for the saints, for you as a saint, as a believer in Christ Jesus. It's the word of God. God and his word, they are, they are synonymous. Mm. Saints of God, please. Let's work on this area of our life. Testimonies, sharing, in other words, is as important as God giving you a new kidney or a new heart, you know, and so on and so forth. Some of these uh, creative miracles and so on and so forth. The word of God is the assurance of a creative miracle or manifestation of his promises because he only confirms his word. 
Hallelujah. And this is what is what you are sharing. When you are sharing testimony, you are prophesying. Hallelujah. Testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of God's word. <laughs> spirit of prophecy. That's what I mean by that. It is prophecy. Amen. Saints of God, my time is really gone now. Praise God. Please. I want to, re I want to hear from everyone who has heard from God. Praise God. The testimony is not, is not, is not about me. Hallelujah. It's about him. He saved you so that you will be his witnesses or his witness on the face of the planet. Hallelujah. He told his disciples, make sure you receive power in order for you to be my witnesses. Hallelujah. In your generation, in this dispensation, you know, it's not about me, you know, but, uh, for the common good of all, including ourselves, the ones sharing the testimony. Because sharing is obeying God at His uh, instruction for you, divine instruction for your life and me. We are to prophesy. Amen. Let us pray, omnipotent Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this awesome privilege that we have in you. We give you praise for your voice and for your word that you have quickened unto us. We give you honor and majesty. Thank you. In Jesus' powerful name, we have praise. Saints of God, continue to prophesy. And remember, tell people, tell people, everyone you know, even those you don't get on with, tell them you'll be blessing them. The Bible says when you bless your enemy, when you pray for your enemy, something supernatural begins to happen <laughs> in their life. You understand? Hallelujah. So it's in order. Let's spread the word. Let's be like the woman at the well. Spread the word. Spread the word. Spread the word. Good things are happening right here. Every Monday night, this is a place to be. Cancel what can be canceled to be on this line, in these services, every Monday. In Jesus' mighty name, praise God. Shalom, saints of God. Send me a text, send a text, uh, email, whatever, or call, and so on and so forth. And God will surely bless you. Until next week, Monday, shalom. God bless you. Keep on prophesying to your generation. Shalom. God bless you.